nothing worse than going through that entire process and then realizing that you're still too hot or too cold. Hold on. Hello guys and welcome to my Monday morning. We are definitely going to be starting out this week a little bit crazy because today I have to get all of my pre-op testing done. So if you guys are not caught up, I'm having surgery on Wednesday, that is in two days. And before you can have surgery, you usually need to be seen by a doctor and then they can say whether or not you're healthy enough to undergo surgery. A little bit ironic because usually you're having surgery because you're not healthy, but they just need to make sure that nothing else is going to get in the way of you having a good outcome. Normally you would have a physical from your regular doctor, your primary care doctor, Unfortunately, because we only had about 12 hours notice before we had to be down here, I wasn't able to have a physical at home. This is also what happened last time. And if you guys remember, we had a really hard time finding anyone who would see me for a pre-op. We even went to an urgent care and the lady didn't feel comfortable signing off because I was too complicated. This time they gave us a number for a doctor that I guess their patients have been using. So we are going to head over there, hopefully, Everything goes smoothly with that. And I need to just do some lab testing, blood, urine, whatever. And I also need more x-rays done, which I'm not super happy about. I have just had so much radiation in my lifetime. I feel like I'm radioactive. I might need to get a Geiger counter just to make sure that I'm not a public hazard. I should be glowing by now. But anyway, you know, it is what it is. And if he needs these for surgery, I'll do what he says. I'm home. Well, not home, but you know what I mean. Today was a very, very difficult day for me. I had to stop taking my blood thinners a few days ago so that I wouldn't like bleed out during surgery. I didn't totally feel it the first few days, but now it's been like four or five days, I think. And I'm feeling really sick. We aren't really sure why my blood thinners make me feel so much better because my darn old hematologist still hasn't faxed the records over to my new one. Some of my doctors have thrown around the term sticky blood, which doesn't really seem like a diagnosis. So all I still know is that half of my brain is blocked off and some of the sinuses in my brain are just a little bit thinner than they should be. I don't really know what a better word is. I would maybe constricted. I'm just like seeing stars all over the place and I'm really, really nauseous. Not in the like stomach way, but like in the neurological way. If you ever had neurological nausea, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I'm just losing vision. My head is pounding. My heart rate is low, but really strong. I can like see my pulse in my vision. And I just feel really foggy in my head, which is not me. We started off the day by going to like a general physician. I needed a history and physical done. And even though it's a bit of a drive, it was very worth it. He was extremely kind. I really liked him. He did all the normal doctor stuff. He listened to my lungs and read my history and we just chatted for a while. And he cleared me for surgery. The unfortunate part is that they didn't tell us until like we got there that they were totally out of network for our insurance and we'd have to pay $400 out of pocket. But we were just like, well, we're here now and we don't have any other options. Surgery's in two days. So we got to just take this opportunity and worry about it later. It's kind of funny because I showed up and obviously he knew nothing about me because I've never met him before. And he's like, okay, you know, what are you having surgery for? I was like, oh, no, I'm just having, you know, part of my spine looked at and refused. I have some hardware in there that needs some 
tending to and he was like okay cool this should be pretty easy you know you look young and healthy so you probably don't have much of a medical record <laughs> and then I pulled out like seven years of medical records that was a little surprising to him of course my mom is amazing and she keeps like an itemized spreadsheet of all of my surgeries and allergies and stuff like that but I actually liked having that Backpack Health app because I felt like I could follow along a little bit better when he was asking which medicines I'm currently still taking and stuff like that. My mom just likes things better on paper and I tend to like things better digitally. So together we kind of cover all our bases. And then I had an EKG done, which was okay. Then we had to head back in this direction and come to the hospital to have all my pre-op labs done. So they just drew some blood and urine and stuff like that. Then they decided that they wanted me to do some more x-rays. At first, they just wanted a chest x-ray. And then they decided to add an extension x-ray of my upper spine, which just basically means you have to bend as far back as you can. Uh, so we get to the x-ray place and we did the regular x-ray, we did the extension x-ray, and then he also did a flexion x-ray, which is bending forward as far as you can. I don't know if I've talked about it before, but I have quite a hard time with flexion and extension imaging because I'm fused and it really exacerbates my symptoms so as soon as i try to like bend my head forward or backwards i start to black out so just on top of everything else that was a lot. I survived. Now we are back and I am laying on my heating pad and I'm never ever going to move again. So I hope you guys like this background. You'll never see any other background again. This is it. This is my life now. Morning guys. Happy Tuesday. Countdown to surgery. One day. Today they sent a nurse to come and access my port for me. It's basically through the same home healthcare company that I use at home. They have people all over and they just contact like the local chapter when you uh, travel. The nurse that came here today is a nurse that I've had a few times in the past. And last time she accessed me, it was that time when like I had like that issue with my port where like my chest filled up with saline and blood and it was a total mess well she couldn't access it again this time we tried three times four times i don't know her theory is that maybe it's like because i'm off my blood thinners my theory is you know she just has never been able to access this port so now i have a little peripheral iv gone over there which you know how much i love um, it doesn't really matter though because I'm not using my left arm anyway, so not too mad at it. Hopefully it'll last the four hours of the infusion and maybe I can get it to last a little bit longer than that and I can do two bags just to get ready for surgery tomorrow. Goodness knows you always get really dehydrated when you have to have surgery because you have to stop food and drink at midnight the day before and I have a pretty late surgery tomorrow so the more fluids I can get in me today, the better. It's just kind of frustrating though that she wasn't able to access my port. I'm really hoping that someone in the hospital tomorrow in pre-op is able to do it because obviously I have the port for these various scenarios where I'm having surgery or stuff like that because my body doesn't put up with peripheral IVs for very long. So if they can't access it before my surgery, it's kind of useless. But I'm not gonna stress about it because there's nothing I can do and I'm just gonna keep moving forward. All right guys, just finished my second liter of saline and it is about to hit midnight. So it is time to stop all food and beverage consumption. But I'm going to do a quick little bolus feed of formula just to keep me going tomorrow because my surgery is scheduled for much later in the day. And it's gonna be kind of rough going all day without calories. I've decided I'm going to try to wrap up my peripheral IV and keep it for tomorrow just in case we have any kind of port trouble or they want to have a PIV with the port. I don't really know, but I don't know how many chances I'm going to have at a good vein. So I'm going to try to keep this one. It's not too comfortable. Can't wear the sling fully. I'm just wearing the shoulder immobilizer part, which kind of works, but it only really works when I'm sitting and laying down. As soon as gravity is involved and I'm standing and walking, it's really hard to support my arm. I kind of have to hold it up with the other arm. The sling is just too painful with this IV and it's definitely going to blow. So this is what a bolus feeding looks like. Basically, it's 
instead of using the pump, you just pour it or you could use a syringe and it's kind of a large amount of feed all at once. It's kind of more similar to having a meal or like a protein shake. Um, I don't tolerate bolus feeds super well for everyday functioning. They usually kind of knock me on my backside because it messes with my blood pressure and it messes with my blood sugar and it's kind of a lot i have a very small stomach now after <laughs> two years of using just a feeding tube so it's kind of a lot of liquid but it is a good way to get calories quickly and that is what i am after right now so all i have to do is just pour it straight into the syringe i can do this because i have a g tube um there are slightly different rules to feeding when it comes to having a J-tube. That is a tube that goes directly into your intestine rather than right into your stomach. I think that people with J-tubes, unfortunately, do not have the option to do a bolus feeding quite like this. But one of these is 8 ounces and this is 237 calories, which would normally take me probably about 2 hours to run through my pump. But I can pour it through a bolus in like 10 minutes. So it's great in a pinch. Oops. No. Okay. This line has got to go. Boo. Good morning, people of the internet. It is Wednesday morning, and that means it is also surgery day. I am pretty much packed up and ready to head to the hospital. I have to check in in like 20 minutes. My surgery's not booked until like 3.30 in the afternoon and it's his third surgery of the day. And I just know that it will not be 3.30. Knowing him, it'll probably be like 7 p.m. But hopefully we can get my port accessed and start running some fluids before then. I'm not nervous about the surgery, I guess. I haven't really thought about it too much to be honest because I've been thinking about it more in terms of like a step towards being able to take care of the knee. The surgery is not really my final destination like it has been in the past. And I think just because I've been through it so many times that I'm just kind of used to it. I'm sure it'll like hit me in pre-op or something like that. But anyway, I guess I better get going because it takes me a while to strap into all those braces. I'll see you guys when I get to the hospital. Okay guys, I am in pre-op now. They were able to access my port super easily, absolutely no problem. I'm telling you, it is just that one nurse who can't access this port. Everybody else can. She left me with a pretty good bruise, but I'm just super happy that we were able to get the port accessed. And guys, I just got part of the blood work back and my iron is on like the good side of normal. It's never been this good. So this means that those patches are working. Cause I've been wondering if that multivitamin patch and that iron patch that I've been using was doing anything to help my levels. And I hadn't had it checked since I started. So this is our first proof that it is working. And I'm so happy. This is the best my iron levels have ever been. So that means that having to get like an iron infusion and all of that stuff is totally off the table. Super excited. This is when I always get panicky. <laughs> I don't like waiting around and I don't like thinking about how I feel. So, whew. I always just wanna like move. So this is my little ritual. I always play this song before I go in. Judy Garland. Every time. And it always works. Peace. I'm like not an anxious person. I'm gonna get copyrighted for this. I am not an anxious person ever until I'm sitting here and waiting. Catching up on the fry life in pre op. <laughs> you guys make me smile. Bad news, guys. They still gotta use an IV. <laughs> Uh, apparently they had had a problem in the past because the spinal surgeries are done with you flipped on your stomach and you're in like a harness and retractor thing and um, I guess they had an incident where someone's port was not working when they were laying forward and so therefore they're a little bit nervous about doing a surgery like that with the port so we're gonna have to place an IV 
just for the surgery. I think that the, she said that we could use the port for the medications afterwards. Um, yes. But I'm not super happy about having an IV, but I know why it's important. And I certainly don't want to wake up halfway through surgery because my port wasn't working. I got the IV. It's not so bad. Ow. Okay. No thumbs up for now. But now I'm sitting here and I'm just like crying because... <laughs> I was just watching um, Peter and Mary's latest vlog. I'm gonna link it down below. Peter was just saying some really meaningful things at the end of the vlog about how sometimes chronic illness can feel a bit defeating because you work so hard to get better and to feel better and to take care of your body. Just, just to still feel pretty crummy and then having to just keep doing it over and over and over. Like, it's never ending. And I think that was just, I don't know, it was just something that I needed to hear right now. All this neurosurgery stuff, you know, I felt like I was done and now it's like, ugh, back here again, doing this again. I thought we were past it, but oh, I can't hold my camera with that arm. Yeah, I, sometimes it does feel never ending and sometimes it does feel defeating and it's okay to feel that way, but we just gotta keep getting back up and just keep going. Very good timing, Peter. Oh, Sam, you know, we're not home. <laughs> we're FaceTiming with my sister from pre-op. What is she doing? She like heard our voices and starts freaking out. What are you doing, Sammy? <laughs> we're in the phone. <laughs> Aw, sorry to excite you. <laughs> okay guys, well I am in a room. Um, things did not go as planned. They sedated me for surgery, so I was prepped. I went under, and then when they tried to place the intubation tube into my lungs to breathe for me, they weren't able to place an airway. And they said that they tried all the tricks. You know, they tried to get it down my throat. They tried to get it in my nose. They did what they could but after an hour of trying my throat and airways were too swollen and full of blood to continue and they didn't want to do permanent damage to my vocal to my vocal cords so I guess I appreciate that but it was really devastating waking up I woke up and I was basically just coughing and choking on blood and I was having a really bad dystonia so I was just kind of like having like a seizure like flaring around but I could hear everybody talking and I could hear my doctor saying that they had to abort the surgery and you know they couldn't get me breathing and stuff like that and so I mean they didn't even open me up uh, so I'm a little bit fuzzy on what we're doing next he spoke to my mom more at length I guess but the plan seems to be to try again next week, hopefully early next Tuesday. The anesthesiologist said that he would do it with um, a lighter sedation so that I wouldn't have to be intubated. <clears throat> and I'm not going to lie, that scares me. The thought of like waking up in the middle of a spinal surgery when you're facing down and your head and skull is pinned into place is just like kind of scary they're keeping me overnight for observation I guess <laughs> just because my airway is so swollen and still bleeding <laughs> it hurts like heck it hurts really bad to swallow it hurts really bad to talk so I'm gonna have to go but just wanted to update the vlog I was just really really disappointed when I woke up knowing that we went through all of that just to have to do it again next week but it is what it is 
and my biggest fear now is that when we go home and I go to have my knee surgery that they're gonna have the same problem and they're not gonna be able to access an airway either because these people are used to accessing airways in patients with no little to no neck mobility and very little jaw opening and they did say that my jaw opening actually wasn't the problem at all okay well my mom has been trying to prime this bag of tube formula for like 20 minutes <laughs> i'm trying to teach her how to do it in case i ever need her assistance in let's just say <laughs> I'm hoping that I'm not going to need your assistance anytime soon. She actually punctured the first bag. <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> it just spontaneously erupted then. But, <clears throat> you know, learning takes time. And I'm just glad that she's willing to learn this part of my life. Have a choice. <laughs> I didn't do a perfect job the first time either. So, you got this, Mom. The surgery did not go through. And I woke up, and what he had done for me, which was nice, was he had given me a nerve block to see if that could help some of the symptoms, which I have to admit it has. But I can feel the pain coming back and it didn't really help anything besides the pain the weakness was still there <clears throat> i'm sorry and the movement is still there i'm concerned about the pain but i'm not overly concerned about just pain i'm concerned about what the pain is trying to tell me my main concerns here is that if something's loose and moving around that's potentially dangerous if this was just a pain thing and i was having nerve issues which is that one nerve I would definitely recommend having this nerve block done. This is something that I've avoided for a long time, any kind of nerve blocks, and it's pretty great, actually. I mean, it really does work and help. I can feel it wearing off already, but um, if my sole purpose in this was pain management, then I think I would be happy with that, but it's not, so I'm getting kind of nervous, especially with the time crunch we're on with the knee, I don't want this to get dragged out and I just have no control and you guys know that I'm not good with no control. I've just spent the last <clears throat> entire night <laughs> and morning coughing up blood and you know there's blood, a lot of blood coming out of my nose and sinuses because they tried to intubate me up through my nose. The back of my throat is covered in blood blisters. My uvula is super swollen and it has sores all over it. It's so swollen it's like touching the back of my tongue and gagging. So it's been fun and every time I like talk or cough it just rips back open. So I've been trying to keep the talking to a minimum. I think my mom's actually enjoying the few minutes of silence every so often. <laughs> I got my special breathy thing here to try to keep all of the blood from <clears throat> going into my lungs, keep my lungs clear. We've been having some trouble getting the medications that I have been prescribed which is frustrating, medications that are not narcotics, medications that I have been taking for years, and medications that, frankly, should not, for any purpose, be stopped cold turkey. It's not because they don't like the medications, it's because they screwed up in the system. So I'm not having a super easy stay here. Don't wanna be here. I don't feel like I need to be here today. There's basically, no reason for me to be here anymore and I'm just feeling sicker the longer I'm here because I'm feeling the effects of not having those medications and I'm also starting to react to some of the linens and smells around here I just want to get out but as you guys know 
Everything in a hospital takes 10 million years. I'm getting some more CT scans done, probably today. He's calling them provocative CT scans, which I find a little bit funny, but basically, <laughs> They want to find the positions that are causing problems and discomfort, and then they want to CT me in that position, which sounds super fun. But my problem with that is that they just nerve blocked me. So it's a little bit harder to identify which positions are painful. But as you can see, I have some more movement in my neck than I should have. I should not be able to turn my head. I was not able to turn my head. So we know that something is going on. We can feel it. We just can't see it. And that's been a big frustration for all of us is we can't, <clears throat> we can't really see exactly what's going on until I'm opened up. <clears throat> and that didn't work. Hey guys, so we've broken out of the hospital. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Sort of. Okay, we're kind of still at the hospital. <laughs> we're just in a different building of the hospital. So that's a start. Oh my gosh, with the fading pump already. Well, it's just kind of been a day. Two days. This time we're going to be trying weird positions as suggested by Trish at home. And the nerve block has worn off. So at least, I mean, at least I'm gonna be able to feel if the positions are correct. I want to get it done in the right way so i'm totally compliant i get it not super happy about more radiation but what can you do you know i just want to move on with my life and i want to do that in the best way possible and then i really 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 want to go home my mom wanted me to show off my lovely array <laughs> of wristbands with all the allergies make sure you don't show my personal information um but i don't know i guess i just like felt so naked without all of my bracelets and rings and earrings and stuff that i decided to collect hospital bracelets instead actually i'm about to get a new one in the ct oh my gosh we're gonna go okay good bye, bye. <laughs> hello you guys i know this is a super weird way to film but this is the best way i could think of filming without having to hold the camera. Um, I'm in a lot of pain. We're back at home now, our Maryland home. And after I came home from the CTs, I just felt like I had to get in the bath. I just felt like there was no place that I had to get faster than the bathtub. I just feel like really super gross and grimy after I'm in a hospital. Plus I was struggling so much to breathe and my throat was still so dry and I had so much blood coming up still I just needed to get in the bath and so I did I added some essential oils to help me breathe and it seems to have worked I don't really know what to do with myself now it's kind of weird being here and being home at a time where I thought I was not going to be I didn't plan these days so I planned to be in the hospital oh, the mirror is all fogging up let me see if I can hold the camera oh the camera's fogged up Oh well. Anyway, I took a bath and we kind of have to make a new plan. Figure everything out. I don't know, is that blood? I can't tell. I'm gonna go to sleep. Hello. <laughs> it is Saturday. <coughs> As you can see, I am not in the hospital. I did not have surgery this, <coughs> this week. That is not for lack of trying. So this was my first experience with an aborted surgery. So you might be thinking, oh, that anesthesiologist is just a major screw up and you should sue him and he's awful. Well, I'm not gonna say that he wasn't kind of rude, but I do have to say <laughs> that intubating a patient like me is extremely difficult and it's one of the biggest worries always going into surgery. In order to get a breathing tube, into the lungs in a straight shot, a lot of times they have to do a little bit of manipulation of both the jaw and the neck. And because I'm complicated in both areas, as well as having EDS, which causes a lot of floppiness and collapsing, I'm a hard intubation. Do I feel like somebody who might have had more experience in EDS patients and spinal fusion patients 
could have done a slightly better job. <laughs> yes, I kind of do feel like he was a little in over his head on this one. But I really just can't blame anyone. I have to say though, my throat was pretty destroyed. Um, you know, once I was conscious enough to understand what was going on with my throat, I immediately asked to see a mirror so I could look at my own throat. And what I saw was horrifying. And I kind of wonder if maybe they should have stopped a little bit sooner. <laughs> Today is the first day that I've been able to fully cough, which is wonderful because I'm able to clear some of that nasty stuff out of my system. The last few days, my muscles and throat and everything were so sore that I wasn't able to cough properly and was having a lot of problems where I was aspirating and it was just not great and I also didn't really have a voice. Now I have a bit of a voice back. It's not my voice but it's a voice. It reminds me of like that episode of Friends where Phoebe gets sick and she has like her sexy sick voice. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? <coughs> okay, no singing. Um, so what is the plan now and what has come from this? Well, I'm the kind of person who believes that everything happens for a reason, so <coughs> of course I was really upset when I woke up and found out surgery hadn't happened, but my second thought was, okay, this had to have happened for a reason, and you know maybe this is not the surgery that I was supposed to be getting or maybe we'll figure something else out in the meantime. So they did actually have me do more imaging and I think that was really at the insistence of my physical therapist Trish at home because I guess they really didn't have much of a plan for exactly what they were going to do when they got in there and because now we know my airways are an issue time is the essence once you get in there and this time we did rotational CT scans as well as bending forward and backwards they had me move side to side and this was telling immediately for me personally because when I was doing <clears throat> the scans themselves I realized just how far I was able to turn my neck versus a few months ago when I had absolutely no turning and that showed on the imaging so as much as it stinks that the surgery didn't go through before i'm actually really glad that we have first of all we have the feedback of the nerve block it tells me that okay if he is able to isolate that nerve for a nerve block and it helps with that pain that tells me that we know exactly which nerve is affected and can trace it back. And then number two, we got these images out of it, which we didn't have before, which could really help us to put together a better surgical plan. The plan now is that I'm booked in on Tuesday at noon for surgery again. <laughs> we're going to try again. Um, our job now is to figure out what we're going to do about the anesthesia and breathing. I don't know if a different anesthesiologist would have a better time. When I spoke to the anesthesiologist after sur after my failed surgery this week, he was a little bit snarky to be honest and he said that that my next time they would do the surgery with me breathing on my own and some kind of sedation. Um, I specifically said, you know, we tried similar things like that before but every time that we've done something like that I stopped breathing and they had to wake me up. And he said, well, if you stop breathing, we'll wake you up and then we'll just keep going. And I was like, what? When it was my feeding tube placement, when it was my angiogram, when it was my port placement surgery. Like, I can deal with those things when I'm awake. I don't want to, but I did and it was fine. But I don't think that I can do this surgery awake. This is... A major surgery I would be suspended upside down with my head in pins and I don't feel comfortable doing that awake and he didn't seem to be offering me any other answers so in the meantime my mom has been doing a ton of research <laughs> I've just been trying to heal and to breathe um, 
but she seems to have turned up a lot in her research. We've spoken to other patients who have had similar issues and I think that we're going to have a good plan. Come Monday, we're going to be talking to the anesthesia department and we could put together a little bit more of a solid plan just so that this doesn't happen again. And I have to say this worries me a little bit because... Up until now, I thought I was totally fine with intubation. I've had issues with sedation, like I told you, but once I'm intubated, I've never had a problem. So now I'm a little bit worried about my knee surgery next month. What they're gonna do, especially having just had my neck done. So, you know, everything's up in the air. We're doing what we can. We are leaving a lot of it up to God and just, you know. We're not in control here, and we're taking the best care of my body. We don't want to push it past its limits. We don't want to push the doctors past their limits. So we are just doing our best and rolling with the punches here. I'm going to close out this vlog so that I can edit it. And I apologize that it's probably super all over the place. I'm not quite sure what I filmed. So yeah, that's what's been going on, and I appreciate you guys have been so sweet with the comments and messages, just praying for me and keeping me in your thoughts as this has been going on. I know that these videos come out like a week after everything is happening. Um, if you want to keep more up to date with me, I do have an Instagram that I always link down below, as well as a personal and medical Facebook page. Um, I'd say probably I'm most active on Instagram, and so Instagram usually knows what's going on before everything else. So if you want to keep more up to date with, like, the moment-to-moment -moment stuff, um, check me out on Instagram, and <sighs> we get to get ready to do this all again next week. Alright guys, if you liked this video, you basically know what to do by now. <laughs> and if you want to see more videos like this, just subscribe. It'd be cool to have you around, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.